this. So anyways, let me uh, go to the uh, actual new material that we really need now. So chapter two, that actually talks about another important concept of calculus, which is called a derivative. Not sure if you ever heard this word, but my goal will be to just little by little start, start make you get used to this because <laughs> as I was saying, my uh, point, we, yeah, I don't think there is 1.6 actually, but uh, if there is, you can skip that section 1.6. So you can check this out on the contents of this textbook, right? So I hope you all by now have the access to this beautiful free textbook. So let me give it again because sometimes people start emailing me. <coughs> Alex, where's the textbook? I told that you should not really always ask me for this. You should save it on your hard drive of computer because again, it may disappear at any time. So you can have the textbook and <coughs> see what it does. So I was about to do a little exercise I found here. I think it was a nice one exercise here, example 213. So in this example, they want me to find the derivative. Now what they do is they put a special symbol for that. It's called prime. That's the way we call derivative. And what we do is take a derivative of that particular function. And the way I do this is I use the formula that says derivative of n's power of x is equal to n multiplied by x raised to the power of one less. Maybe later I will go over this idea why this is actually derivative. It's not that simple because you actually have to look at this kind of <coughs> formula. Whenever I show it to my students, they're not happy. They say, oh, okay, Alex, we got it. Okay, okay, let's just move on. So I need to utilize this formula today. My goal is to get used to it. And what I do is I try to find the derivative of x raised to the power of two here. So I put this prime. So what I do is I have to put two, just like power of n as a factor in front and multiply x raised to the power of one less. So I subtract one, just like this formula says. So I just follow the formula and I end up with two times x to the first power, right? Two minus one is one. So just two x. So it turns out that 16 is gonna stay multiplied and we're gonna times this by two x, which is actually derivative of our x squared in here and then well since we always simplify i can also times your 16 by 2 so we got 32 with x and looks like that's exactly what they produced for the answer but they went a long way <coughs> oh, excuse me i think i got some kind of infection so it's great that I can do it from my place but anyways so derivative is a function that uh, will be 32 times x but there is some other stuff that actually turns into zero because remember when you take the limit when h goes to zero this disappears and all you have is just 32x and that's result. So instead of doing that limit process, I recommend you to use the formula because this is not as lengthy and I'm sure that most students will definitely like that better. So let me go to the section end as usual to the exercises and practice to use this formula again and again so we start to feel a little bit better about this. So 
I guess I need some room cleared here. <coughs> so they say here to find the derivative of the function. And they also say, I use some particular point for that matter. So let's see what this is all about. So I'm going to take exercise number three and do this derivative here. So for this problem, I need to differentiate 5x minus 3. So that's my function, 5x minus 3. OK. What I can think of is 5 times x to the first power and then minus number 3 here. And for that matter, I'd like you to see a little bit of a shortcut how we can possibly use this formula. That's in fact the only formula that I gave you for derivatives, but to make our life a little bit easier. So what if you have the first power of x, or you can say x to the power of one, then what be its derivative? Notice that's prime and I have x to the power, power is one. So just like in the formula down below, I have to put one, that little power as a factor out in front. So I'm gonna be using this, let me write this power, it's not a color, so we better see this. So I'm gonna have this power one, which goes on the ground as a factor. And that's exactly what the formula says. And then I have to multiply it by x raised to the power of one smaller. So this will be x to the power of zero. So when I multiply x to the zero by number one, I actually need to know that x to the zero is equal to also one. So in other words, derivative of x itself is one. First power of x is one. And again, I just utilized uh, justification for that formula here. So now what I'm gonna do is look at another piece here because I also have a constant number five, right? In exercise 27. So what's the derivative of constant? Or maybe I can just write it as a five for convenience. Well, this constant five, I can write as five multiplied by zero power of x. Because <coughs> the zero power of x is one, so this doesn't change anything, but it enables me to use the formula, the only formula that we're gonna utilize so far. So I'm gonna keep that five in front and then put that zero in front and raise x to the power of zero minus one. So notice that I'm gonna multiply zero here by x raised to the power of negative one. And what is x raised to the power of negative one? I guess that's one over x, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So one over x and that's a, well, that's a zero because no matter what you multiply by zero, turns out it is gonna give you a zero. So we have another little property of exponents. So whenever you take a derivative of the constant, so people like to write it like that constant, its derivative is zero. So now I can do problem number 27 and use both of these little facts. So when I have to take derivative of function y, that is composed as a sum of two pieces, 3x and 5. So I'm going to be taking derivative of each piece one at a time then. So first piece derivative, according to the formula that we just produced and this is going to be a three, right? Because 
derivative of x is one. So let's do it one at a time. I can't really do two at a time. I'm not that fast. And then derivative of five is going to be zero. Of course, I'll answer it. So it's just going to be equal to three. So derivative of this is three. So when I look at exercise number 32, and that 32 is where? Here? Or the previous section? Is that the one you want to do? Or you want to do it from previous section? And you also say 37. So is 37 also from previous section? Should I go to the previous section? Let me go there. Sounds like I should go to the previous section. So while we're going to the previous section, I think it's a very good idea because we should be able to actually see what's the last section of chapter one is. So let me go there a little bit. Yeah, it's very good to ask questions because otherwise I can write just about anything, right? So that makes no sense. Oh, one six in that. So that one six is what we also did, right? So in one six, we did left sided limits and the right sided limits. So my question is, are you in one six or you want to go back to one five? Because I'm not sure. Maybe one five, right? So yeah, one six, we did problems. We just plug numbers in and uh, pulled out the answers. So we did that section. And we also looked at section one five. So you want to exercise number 32 in it. <laughs> so let us go back to it. It's always a good idea to make sure that you are clear on this. So in exercise 32, it looks like a problem that's a little bit different with what we did before. So you want to do this 32 or I'm not sure which one you want me to do. And this 37 from this section or from someplace else, because I'm not uh, clear which you wanted me to do. I don't think we did uh, 32 and 37, so I can actually just see what's in the other groups of exercises. If someone asked me, looks like two questions, and there was a question, why did we start number three but didn't finish? So let's see what's number three and what wasn't finished here because I not sure what you're asking. So exercise number three is here. Is that the one that you would have in mind? What section is that? Because it's important for me to know what section you are looking at. Or I can do all of these problems. I'm fine with that because they do nothing but make me feel good. So if you want, I can also. So section three in section 2.1. Oh, okay, so I go back. See, it's a little bit time consuming to go back, but I guess it's a good practice. It's good practice for feeling comfortable about browsing the textbook. So let's do number three exercise that you want me to actually look at. And the exercise number three says, what about the limit of two? from the picture. So all we do, we plug the number in. So in exercise, oh, that's one six, sorry. See, need to concentrate. That's one six, so let's move to the actual chapter two and see what happened there. So, so I hope all the questions uh, coming from section 2.1, or you still want me to go back to chapter one. So whoever asked this, please let me know what sections you had in mind, <laughs> because I just browsing back and forth and that's kind of 
I guess good practice. So anyways, let me go back to you said exercise three. So it's almost there. That's a good news. Okay, good. So you are in same section that makes me happy. We finally see what happened. So the function here is in exercise three is f of x, which is 5x minus 3. And they asked me to find derivative. <laughs> so I found derivative of 5x, and that was 5. And derivative of constant was 0. Mm -hmm. And this is it. And I see where your question is coming from now. It says, what can you do with 2, Alex? Where are you plugging in? Well, you don't have the room to plug it in, so you just 5. And that's why I just moved to another exercise. Sometimes when you have x variable in your answer, then you can plug that number in on the next step. But that exercise was just the first one, so didn't really have such a sophistication. It looks like an exercise, you said number 27, it's going to be the same exact thing because it looks like it's analogous function here, which is, 3x plus 5, right? So if I take its derivative, it's 3, it's not 5. You should be careful. <laughs> 3x plus 5. So if I take derivative of 3x, then I already know that x is going to disappear, right? Because it's a... Uh, formula that we had here. I try to highlight it because that's something we're going to use a lot. So this is derivative of x or x to the first, which is just one. So we'll add with number three, which is multiplied by it. And then for the other piece, I use another rule for derivatives. It's fact that derivative of constant is zero. So derivative of five is zero because it's constant. So we get a three. I say, Alex, what about this plugging something in, like uh, negative one? Well, you can't. Because, again, you ended up with a constant. And that's the idea. So I'd like to do more exercises, so we'll see a little bit better why they give us extra numbers here. So for that matter, I guess I'm going to try problem like number 11. That one has a square root on the bottom, so I guess that will be a little bit different. So we get a little bit of room here. So it turns out that again, whenever they ask me for finding derivative, the only formula I use is here. And of course, there are two more that help. Both of those formulas are actually <laughs> coming from the big one, the power. So let me try the problem number 11. And please notice that this gives you a little bit different name for function and for the variable. It's H of letter U in the parentheses. Well, it doesn't matter how we call our variable or how we call our functions. So all I can do is recall the fact that a square root of u is nothing else but power of one half, right? So let me prepare this a little bit. So if I have one over square root of u, that's going to be one over u to the power of one half, right? And whenever you have that power and denominator, well, we don't really like it. So what we do is we bring this up to numerator. So we actually have negative power of one half. And that's what they should have actually gave us here because, well, this way we can use our formula. Again, that's the only formula, the one on the lower right corner. 
So all I do is I subtract one from the power and put the power negative one half in front. So my power of u, which used to be a negative one half, will be <coughs> with one subtracted from it. So it's straightforward application of that formula. So my goal was to write this as a power, doesn't matter, negative or positive. So now I need to do a little bit of arithmetic. That's what we going to do a lot. So I need to put this two together. So it'll be two halves, because if I multiply one by two halves, nothing's gonna happen with it, but this will enable me to take care of these powers. So negative one half, negative two halves will be negative three of those halves. And of course I have one half in front, I don't know why I wrote this wiggle, so it's one half in front. So I'm prepared to do what? Simplification, because I just took derivative of this stuff, right? I just utilized the formula that, again, put negative one half in front, and then we subtracted one just like we are supposed to do according to the new little rules. I know it's uh, something very different. That's why I don't want to give you a quiz today. I want you to just look at this over weekend and uh, maybe get used to a little bit better. So now I need to go backwards and uh, write this as a um, u to the power of positive three halves on the bottom, right? Because this is always have to be, always has to be positive power. And finally, but I can also say that derivative of that function is going to be negative. Now, <laughs> halves means it's a square root and u to the power of 3. So this is my derivative. Please notice it is rather tedious. Whenever we have this fractional functions, it is taking a little time. And that's why it's a good idea, maybe over weekend, that you get a pen and paper and try to do same problem again. So now one can say, Alex, your letter U is four. So what I have to do is replace, just plug it in, right? So that letter U was a four. So they're just the variable. See, they need to give you some kind of variable. So they call it as X usually. They can call it as U, as T, or whatever else. So don't think too hard about this because this is just a random number here. So what I just found is one over two cube <coughs> with negative signs. So it'd be negative one over eight. So we found, let me say, Alice, what is that you actually just found? That's a good question. So let me show you what is that I just found by making a picture. So it turns out that all that is designed to help you make pictures of various functions. And in some cases, those pictures are pretty straightforward, like in the some exercises here. And in some cases, it's not. So what I can do is give you access to the free graphing calculator. So you can make sense out of this. What I can do is start typing graphing calculator. So here's the choice for it, graphing calculator. And choice number one, the so-called Desmos, is what I'm going to utilize in here in order to enter my function. And what was the function here, remember? One over square root of u, right? So, okay, let me go here to the line with this letters and uh, turns out I can hit here, I must, for some reason, always go to the lower 
left corner here where the keyboard is. So for some reason, the keyboard does not appear right away, but you can click on it. So you got that. And now we can go with the fraction one divided by the square root of instead of letter U, I put X. So here it is. You got the graph in here. So I recommend to use this calculator whenever you doubt, because I know that some people are gonna use it anyway. So I'm gonna, to be fair to everyone in class, just give the link to this calculator to all students here. So you can try to click on it and try to enter this function. So what's going on now? They gave me a point that I had to plug into this whole structure. And that point was four, right? I said, Alex, see, if you plug four, you're gonna get some like uh, less than one, some kind of number. Well, that's not what we need. Turns out we found derivative and derivative deals with a tangent line to this function, tangent line, the line that touches. So I just tried to produce this blue little line that touches my red graph and its slope is what we just found. So the slope, which is negative one over eight, is a number that we produced. You say, what? why do I need that? Well, it turns out we'll see that's a very useful idea of slope. But of course, not uh, here at uh, negative one over eight because it's not really much of the use. So you can see that these things are actually getting a little bit time consuming. And that's why I will not actually expect you to do problems of this level on the exams because they're tedious. They're not hard, but they're tedious. But if you can copy this on the paper and submit it as your homework, I think that'd be just perfect because I firmly believe that you will be learning a little bit from this process. So I'd like to do one more exercise in here and then maybe stop for today as promised. I'm not giving you the quiz today because I think first of all we had already uh, quite a few quizzes and second of all I guess this material is supposed to be done a little bit in more detail and that's what we're going to do next week on Monday so let me try something nicer something much nicer here and what I'm thinking about is exercise 7 so this be the same exact thing. Find the slope of that so-called tangent line <laughs> for the function at that point, which is two. Okay. So it looks like I'm gonna use the two new little statements here. So first of them is that I have to put that power in, which is now three in front. And x will be raised to the power of 3 minus 1. I say, is that 2? Yes, it is 2. And the other fact that derivative of constant is 0. So if I take derivative of that stuff, it will be a 0 that left over. So <coughs> I guess the power is 3 minus 1, which is 2 here. And I found the derivative of that cubic parabola, right, which is 3 x squared. I say, well, so what does this mean? Well, it means that at every point, such as a 2 here, so now we are to plug in 2 for x, exact same footsteps as in the previous exercise. I find derivative using the point, and then I plug instead of variable that number 2, I get 3 times 4, which is 12. And this is slope of the line that is called tangent. 
tangent line to cubic parabola. And this is what we already know how to graph, right? I don't need any graphing calculator for this. I can just take a cubic parabola, which is x cubed minus one. Turns out it's moved a little bit down by one unit. So it'd be passing through negative one on y-axis. And now they want me to look at the point two, right? Because they gave me the particular point two. So it turns out that point two, there be somewhere here, tangent line, which is increases. And since it's increases, then the slope of that tangent line is what we just found, and that was number 12. So I guess I'm going to stop at this stage, and I will let you relax a little bit. I know this is over Elman. When you see derivatives first time, I don't want you to start panicking. <laughs> but I want to tell you that little by little we'll be using, getting used to this again and again and again. And uh, after a couple of weeks, I'm sure you're going to start to like it because what I plan is to do exercises, do exercises of the type of something like seven, which I think actually assign you to do problems like that because I think these problems are more straightforward. So again, please don't worry. So I guess that's all I wanted to discuss today. We'll continue with the section 2.1. It definitely deserves more time. So I'm going to stop recording for today.